Hello, Math Study students, and welcome to your online lesson. Today, we'll be continuing our discussion of solving right triangles using trig ratios, and today we'll be focusing specifically on finding angles with trig ratios. In our previous video, we had found missing sides using trig ratios or trig functions. Our learning intention is that we will learn to use trigonometric ratios to solve for missing angles of a right triangle, and we will know we are successful when we can solve right triangles using trig ratios. Quick reminder of our three main trig ratios or trig functions that we'll be using. Sine of, an un, uh, sine of an angle is equal to opposite side over the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side of that angle over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent leg. Again, we sometimes use the acronym SOCATOA to remember these ratios, and I will be using those on each of our two examples here today. If you have any questions about how to set up these ratios, please refer back to uh, one of the previous videos in this unit. All right, for our first example, we'll be finding correct to three significant figures the measure of an angle marked theta. Again, theta is a very common uh, variable the Greek letter used to represent an unknown angle. We'll often use lowercase letters still for missing sides, as you saw in the previous lesson. So we're trying to find this angle right here. So in the previous video, we had found missing sides, which we had done before using Pythagorean theorem. But then we had usually two sides, and we'd find a unknown third side. In our last video, we'd usually have an angle and a side and use that to find a missing side. This time, we have two sides. So if we wanted to, we could use Pythagorean theorem and find the missing side, but we aren't asked to do that. We're asked to find a missing angle. So this will really be the first time that we've done this in our class, find missing angles, knowing nothing about the angles that are already there except for the fact that it's a 90 degree triangle. All right, so we need to start by looking at our unknown angle or the angle that we're trying to find and figure out what relationship the sides that we have um, are in comparison to this angle. And what I mean is, are they opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Quick reminder that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So uh, let's start with this three here, this three meters. It's one of our sides. It's not a degree or anything like that. And we can see that it is the side that is across from our 90 degree angle. It's also the longest one, so that would be our hypotenuse. And then this two meter side is across from or opposite of the unknown angle that we're looking for. So I can say that that one is our opposite side. So which one of our trig ratios deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Well, it turns out it's the first one. Sine has opposite O and hypotenuse H. Cosine doesn't have opposite and tangent does not have um, hypotenuse. So we are using sine. So right away, I'm going to write down sine. Remember that sine, cosine, and tangent are always of an angle. What angle are we dealing with here? It's our angle theta. We don't know how much it is, but we know it is an angle. So we're going to do sine of theta is equal to, now quick reminder, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite in this case would be the two meters, and that's going over our hypotenuse, which is our three. All right, so we have set up our trig ratio or our trig function, similar to what we did two lessons ago. Now we need to do algebra. And looking at it right away, you might be like, there's no variable here, but there is. It's this angle right here. And so what we're going to do in order to get this alone is we need to undo the operation that's happening. Well, if we were doing multiplication, we'd undo that with division. If we were doing adding, we'd undo it with subtraction. If we were squaring, we'd undo it with square rooting. And those are some of the different operations that we know how to undo. We've never undone sine before, so we are going to be introduced to the new opposite or inverse operation for sine. And the inverse operation for sine, or the opposite operation, is inverse sine. And we abbreviate that with just sine to the negative one power. Now, it's not really taking it to the negative one power uh, in the sense that uh, we're taking a number and doing anything with it, but negative one generally turns, flips a fraction over, and so it, uh, it's like showing undoing if we were dealing with multiplication or division, and so that's what they're using that notation for here. So we're going to do the inverse sine of both sides. Now, I had to squeeze it in here at the bottom because you can't put inverse sine to the right of it. If I write it like this, 
you would ask yourself the inverse sine of what? There should be something after it. So you have to put inverse sine or inverse cosine or inverse tangent in front of the thing that you're dealing with. So if I want to write this over to make it a little bit neater, I could write it as, again, inverse sine of sine of theta is equal to inverse sine of two-thirds. Now, why was I allowed to do the inverse sine because I did it to both sides. I did it to the left side. And why did I do it to the left side? Because I wanted to cancel out the sign that we had there so that we could get theta, our variable, our unknown angle all alone. But again, I also did it to the right side. So I'm keeping everything equal doing railroad tracks or you know appropriate operations. So as mentioned, the inverse sign and the sign are going to cancel each other out, leaving just theta, which is what we wanted. Now on the right side, we still have this inverse sign and we have the inverse sine of two-thirds. So how do we now simplify to figure out what this actually is? On your calculator, you will see your sine button that we used in the previous lesson. And if you press the second key first, it'll allow you to create a, a, the inverse sine function. So you're going to press second on your calculator and then sine, and that will, on the calculator display, create the sine to the negative one or inverse sine function. It will also automatically open a parenthesis. You're going to type 2 divided by 3, close your parenthesis, and then hit enter. Now, we're going to get a big, long decimal value here for our number. But remember, we are finding a degree. And all of the angles of our triangle have to add up to 180. Well, we already know we have a 90-degree angle. And none of both of these are acute angles, but none of them are that small if the picture is even remotely to scale. So I'd expect to have some values that you know aren't like super tiny, like 1 or 0.5 or something like that. But also, they have to be less than 90. And I would expect them to be somewhere sort of splitting the, the remaining 90 degrees. Now, as we actually press Enter on our calculator, we end up with approximately 41.8 degrees. Again, remember to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. You can hit the Mode key and then select Degree if it's not in that mode. And that is our example. We're going to do one more of these. Once again, finding to three significant figures the measure of the angle marked theta in the following diagram. So once again, theta is a variable, represents an unknown angle. We do know one of the angles is 90 degrees, which allows us to use our trig functions. We have two sides of a triangle. And again, if we want to find that third side, we could use Pythagorean theorem. But we're trying to find this unknown angle. So I'm going to write down SOHCAHTOA just to remind myself of my trig ratios. And I'm going to identify the two sides that we have in relation to this angle that we're trying to find, this non-right angle. So I'm looking at the 7 first. It is next to the angle, but it is not the hypotenuse. So it is the adjacent leg. So I'm going to write ADJ, abbreviating adjacent for that one. And then I have this 10 centimeters which is across from our unknown angle, also referred to as opposite. So I have the opposite side and the adjacent side. Sine has opposite but no adjacent. Cosine has adjacent but no opposite. So that leaves me with tangent, which has opposite and adjacent, the two things that I have in relation to the angle we're looking for. So I'm going to use my tangent function. So tangent of theta, my unknown angle, is equal to, again, opposite over adjacent. So our opposite was 10, and our adjacent is 7. So 10 over 7 is what we're dealing with here. Um, our goal is to get our variable alone. What variable do we have? Theta. What is keeping theta from being alone? The tangent. So similar to what we did when we had a sine, we need to undo tangent. What function undoes tangent? Inverse tangent. And that, again, is tangent to the negative 1. If you do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. And again, the inverse tangent function has to go before the value that we're actually finding the inverse tangent of. So to keep my notation correct, I'm just going to squeeze it in here. But if you want to write it a little bit neater, again, we could rewrite the whole thing out. Tangent to the negative 1, or inverse tangent of, it's not times because it's not a number, it's a function that's being applied, but of tangent of theta is equal to inverse tangent of 10 sevenths. 
The whole reason we were using the inverse tangent was so that it could cancel out the tangent that we already had, leaving just theta behind. And on the right side now, we have the inverse tangent of the value 10 sevenths. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to our calculator because our variable theta is all alone. Again, make sure your calculator is in deg degree mode. Once you set it there, it should stay there unless someone changes it back to radians. Um, and so we press second and the tangent key, which will open up the inverse tangent function. It'll also open a parenthesis. You hit 10 divided by 7, close your, your parenthesis, and hit enter. And we get a final answer of theta being equal to approximately 55 point zero degrees and that's rounded to three significant figures all right i do need the zero to show that i rounded to three significant figures rather than just two um, again if we look back at our picture that seems reasonable we had two angles one here and one here we were trying to find the one that looks a little bit bigger and we know together they would have to add up to 90 degrees since the whole triangle is 180 and we already know there's a 90 degree angle present. So it seems reasonable. We know it's an actual degree that we're finding, so I have the correct label on there. And that concludes our lesson on using trig ratios to find unknown angles. Until next time.